I could for sure start this video with like amazing clips from BBC documentaries about the Northern Lights and some incredible pictures that have been taken by landscape photographers over the years and giving you the whole like Northern Lights like talk and you know oh when I was a kid and I saw it on TV and you know since then I've always wanted to see it and you know using words like magical and ethereal and and Philip Pullman and like Norse mythology and all of this but honestly I don't think that I really need to I mean maybe I will include some clips of other times that people have seen the lights um, because they've for sure done a better job um, than me at capturing them but honestly I don't think that I need to we already have kind of a shared understanding here that seeing the northern lights is one of the most like beautiful and kind of unforgettable and once in a lifetime things um, that can happen to somebody. It's kind of something everybody's heard of and everybody would want to see, but it takes so much effort and so much luck to actually get to see it. Well, I'm talking from obviously the perspective of somebody who grew up in England. You know, every time you see Northern Lights stuff, you are jealous and you think, oh, I would love to do that someday. But ultimately, you know, it's quite real, um, realistic, unrealistic. And I imagine the same goes for, you know, people in the US. Um, obviously it doesn't, it's not the same if like, if you live in Iceland or if you live in uh, Northern parts of Canada or somewhere like that, probably if you live in those places, um, you see it as like neither rare nor that spectacular. You're just like driving home from work and you're like, oh, Northern Lights again, sick. And for those of you who don't know, maybe this is your first time on my channel, um, I spent last autumn in Tromsø in the Norwegian Arctic and I was lucky enough to actually see the Northern Lights on two occasions. Even if you have seen my video, I don't think that's clear, I don't think I mention it um, because it's kind of uninteresting or unimportant, but like the lights section at the end of that video um, is actually over two nights, although most of what I show uh, is from the second night, which as I'll get into was the absolutely like stunning and unforgettable night. The first night that I went out on a Northern Lights tour, um, yeah, I have I have so much to say about Northern Lights tourism and, uh, and photography, and I know I just said I wasn't gonna do a massive intro, and I've just been talking for ages, but okay, we'll go through my pictures uh, and my videos from the first night first. Also, my hair has just been pure ratty at the start of this video, I'm sorry. I'll uh, show a little bit more class. <laughs> for the rest of the video. And um, these are all the things. We are all here. So I also recommend... I want to see shout out this guy. This was the first... This was the guide on the uh, the first night that I went out. He was, he was obviously like running this business by himself um, and it was a little less like polished than some other tours I imagine but yeah it was the cheapest one in town and it was like the only one that uh that had spaces when I um when I booked it kind of last minute yeah he did a good job all the tours obviously kind of have the same idea that um in the city it's too bright to see the northern lights on most nights um so they drive you to a spot where there's no clouds and no light pollution and you can watch them much easier there um as you can see from us driving out here uh it was raining that night, which is not really a great start because we're already under cloud cover and we have to find somewhere to get out. And he was like, and both tours I went on did this, but yeah, they like, every so often they kind of stop and get out and, uh, and take a look at the sky because you have all the websites and the weather forecasts and so on, but that can really only tell you so much, like up to the second, you know, so it's better to actually get out of the vehicle and look up and see what you can see um, and shoot with the camera and see what you can see. I remember this one spot this guy took us to, it was the first place that we went and uh, it was raining still and we got out of the car and he was like, oh, there might be a spot down here and like we did, we walked for a bit and then like it wasn't raining anymore down there and there was no clouds um, and then we were stood there for like two minutes and then the clouds came back over and it started raining again and he just, <laughs> I don't want to make fun of him because this is definitely the kind of stupid thing that I would do and the stupid thing that I would say. But I just remember so clearly we were like, we were kind of on top of, um, I don't know if it was like a cliff or, or something, but there was kind of a, a dip in front of us and there was supposed to be like a river, like we were on top of one of the cliffs looking over one of the fjords in the Tromso area. And he was like, oh, this is the most incredible view in front of us. Honestly, it's so good. And we were like, it's pitch black. We can't see anything. It's like the dead of night and it's freezing cold. Like if we're not staying here, can we just like get back in the car and go somewhere else? Cause it's freezing cold. And he was like, oh, honestly in front of us is the most amazing view. And he, he got out his phone and he was like showing us pictures of the view during the daytime. And I just remember thinking, but we can't see that now. It doesn't matter how good the view is in front of us. It's pitch black. But thankfully, yeah, we got back in the car and we looked for somewhere else. This was the second spot that we went for um, and it was a beach 
and yeah, there was no clouds and it wasn't raining, um, but the lights went out at this point. But there was a guy down there in, uh, in a high-vis jacket who was like trying to reserve the whole beach for his Northern Lights company. Um, and this is something that I didn't expect. I think I expected that because there's so many companies doing the tours, then we would kind of, whatever area we did find, we would share with people. Um, but I didn't expect that there would be some people trying to like reserve some areas for their group only and getting like really aggy with you if uh, if you try and go there. But yeah, our guy, I really felt for him. He was like trying to negotiate with this guy who was not budging. Like his group wasn't even there. And he was like, oh no, you can't come here. My group's coming. Like this is our space and I've reserved it. And at one point our guide, even to us, was like, do you mind if we share this with another group? And we all said no. Do, do you see a problem if we share this place with other group? No. 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 So why this guy make such drama? And it's so true, like, I don't know what was going on there, but our guide later said to me when I was talking to him about it, he said that um, in Tromsø there's a lot of like uh, tax evading kind of companies um, who will do tours and not pay tax and they like, they try and operate like in a really shady way. And he thinks this is one of the illegal tours. But in the end, it started raining on that spot anyway. So as we got back in the car, we were we were laughing about it. And then we drove even further. So the night was getting on at this point and we came to like kind of a lay by um, by the side of a of a river where there was like three or four other uh, mini buses. And as soon as we saw that, I think everybody noticed, ah, this obviously is the spot then, like all the other groups have decided that this is the place to be. And yeah, we pulled up, there was no clouds, no rain, and there was just loads of uh, other tour groups there who were really in like a really good mood. Um, and yeah, the fact that other people were there, we were like, okay, they've obviously figured this out and they know what they're doing. We got out of the van, yeah, it was freezing and they give you like um, coffee and, and like some kind of snacks and stuff. So this is actually my first ever picture of the Northern Lights. Um, and this is the point where, yeah, I just have so much to say about Northern Lights photography. Um, you couldn't see this with the naked eye at all. And I think like, I don't know, you always have, um, when you see travel stuff on Instagram or even like in magazines, you know, it's like super processed and, and photoshopped and the person shot it on like the perfect moment for the light and whatever. And I think I knew that the kind of incredible Northern Lights stuff that you see has to be kind of processed or doctored in some way. But what I didn't really expect is that you could have something in your photos that you can't see at all. <laughs> like I knew, I know that we, we treat photos and we put filters on and so on, like of something that is already there and you make it, you try and make it like as perfect as possible. I don't think I expected that you could have a picture of something where you're like proudly showing that you saw something without it actually being there, without actually being able to see it. I think to me that's actually kind of a big difference and yeah I remember when I got this picture I was like oh that is amazing they are there but how can I send it to people back home how can I put it on Instagram because I haven't seen this so I was kind of a little bit I don't know it's really really exciting the first time that you see this in your camera you're like oh my god they're there like I've shot a picture of the Northern Lights but then when you think about it it's a bit like oh I don't know if I expected it to be quite like this and I don't know, I, obviously at the end of this trip, like I had my whole disappointment and everything and the Northern Lights were going to save my trip. And then if it was just that, I think I would have been kind of disappointed. But as we know, the pictures get better than this. So this is actually quite a good example. So this and this were probably shot within like two seconds of each other, but I've made it look brighter and made it look more impressive and made it look more like oh send it home and make people jealous just by the settings in the camera so it's just a longer exposure and probably a higher ISO as well so you've made something that isn't there come out in the picture and you can even like squeeze more out of it and make it even more impressive and make it look great even though you can't see anything with the naked eye and I've I don't know I just find that really really weird and I don't know how I feel about it and it makes me reevaluate all of the things that I've seen before. But this is, yeah, this is my first attempt at getting myself in a picture. And this picture, oh, this is that, I would say this is my favorite picture that I got of me with the lights. I don't know. If you'd have shown me that a few years ago, I would have said that I would have plastered that like all over my Instagram and like made it the thumbnail and everything. And I might still change the thumbnail to this. But you couldn't see it. You couldn't actually see it. It wasn't really there. That's just the log exposure in the camera making something that isn't there show up in the picture. And so 
yeah, I felt kind of conflicted about it until, so you can see I have some other failed attempts at getting myself in pictures and during this time it is getting brighter. I think this is with the same camera settings and you can see that it is getting stronger. And then right at the end, we did get a brief moment where you could see it with the naked eye and that kind of changed my opinion a little bit, but yeah. I don't know, I didn't really know what I was doing with the camera at this point and oh, I'm still just making it look so much better than it was in person, but you could, like during these when it was super bright in photos, it was kind of vaguely bright with, uh, with the naked eye as well and that was amazing. Um, that kind of picked me up from the disappointment of realising that it, or thinking that it's not real. Yeah, I think we were kind of packing up to uh, to leave at this point. And you could just hear, because we were there with like all these different groups and everybody was just chatting the whole time. But you could just hear, it was almost like somebody turned the audio levels down, like everybody was talking until suddenly it was like, and everybody just breathed in and kind of held their breath for a second. And we were like, oh my God, wow, this is incredible. And yeah, as soon as I'd taken a couple of pictures like this, um, it had gone away and you couldn't see it with the naked eye anymore. And yeah, on the way back, um, so uh, when we were on the way out, the guy was like, I have a 100% success rate of seeing the Northern Lights on my tours. And I thought, wow, this is great. That means we're basically guaranteed, like what are the odds that it's me who's like in the first group that he doesn't see the lights with? And then later in the night, I asked him like, so how long have you been doing these tours? And he said two weeks. He moved to Trolls like two weeks ago and he'd done like seven or eight of these tours and he had a 100% success rate in those, which is not really quite as impressive as I was hoping for. But it did mean that because we saw them and uh, and we got pictures with them. Uh, so we succeeded. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I had... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 100% successful. He, he did his best for us that night for sure. He found a spot where we saw the lights and uh, I was, yeah, I was happy for him. So I talked to him a few times during the night and every time he was like, oh, you've got to come back tomorrow, you've got to come back tomorrow. Which at first is like, oh, trying to sell tickets or whatever. But um, he kept talking about this solar flare that had apparently uh, been emitted or like erupted out or whatever by the sun. And it was forecast to actually hit Earth the following night. And um, yeah, I, I Googled it and it was true. There was like all these articles by, um, by NASA and all these different kind of meteorological, meteorological, I think, <laughs> uh, websites talking about it, um, how there was this like massive solar flare. Apparently it was, I don't, I can't remember the class. It was like X1 or something, I think. Um, and that's like the biggest class of solar flare that that actually is. Um, and it had been emitted by the sun like two days before. And it was forecast to um, hit the earth's like magnetic, Field, I guess, I don't know how any of this works, um, the following night. And there was all this buzz about it online. And that was when, I, you might actually remember, I think it made the news like in Southern countries, you know, for everybody who was still in the South during that time. Um, I think it actually made the news like in the UK and in Germany and so on. Um, because I had people back home being like, oh, there's gonna be such strong Northern Lights, you're gonna be able to see it from England tomorrow, which was nice to see on the news. You know, I was thinking, ah, I've paid all this money to stand in the freezing cold to see the Northern Lights. And there's a chance that people at home might just be able to see them for free. That obviously didn't end up happening, which is, you know, good for me, good for good for my ego. But there was genuinely um, a massive solar explosion. There's a couple of apps that like forecast the northern lights um, and rate kind of how likely you are to see them on, on a given night in a given place. And I had been following one for the forecast in Tromsø the whole time that I was there. And it had never gone above like a two or maybe a three out of 10. Um, and the actual tour guides who do this will say that these numbers like don't really mean anything, but they are kind of an indication. Um, I think the day I saw these lights, the weak lights, it was a two out of 10 uh, Northern Lights forecast. And I looked on the app after talking about this like ginormous like solar eruption or whatever. Um, and for the next night, the rating was 10 out of 10, like strength of the lights, which I hadn't seen at all. I'd never seen it go above like a two or three. So I thought, okay, this is, this is serious um, and I'm going to try and book myself onto a tour, but I decided to, to go with a different tour, like a, a bigger, more expensive tour the second night because uh, I knew it kind of had this feeling of like a once in a lifetime kind of thing, especially the way people were talking about it on this night. The only worrying thing was that there was a chance um, that the flare would actually hit the Earth's atmosphere during the daytime, during the sunlight hours. Um, which there obviously aren't many of when you're that far north, um, but there was a chance that it could have hit during the daylight hours and just we wouldn't get any northern lights out of it. Um, 
but as it turned out, uh, yeah, I'll get into my photos and videos from the second night. Oh, I love looking at the footage of this night. Um, yeah, if you've already seen the Norway video, then you know why I'm kind of gushing about this so much because I did obviously get just unbelievably lucky with uh, with the light show the second night. And yeah, it didn't, uh, the solar explosion didn't land during daylight hours. It did land while we were out at night. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. These two, um, it was a two person operation this time and uh, they'd been doing it for years. And they said this was like in the top two nights of the entire time that they'd run this company which was kind of cool. And yeah, we ended up seeing pink Northern Lights, which they said that they'd never seen before. Yeah, they told us the whole science and the mythology and everything on the way out, uh, same as the other guy. We basically found a spot with these guys really quickly. We drove for probably like two hours, maybe a bit less. So it's not quick, but um, yeah, we drove two hours out of Tromso, but then when we were out that far away, they basically picked a spot really quickly. Um, I think it was clear that like no clouds were coming and we were gonna be, yeah really really lucky and then my first pictures of the northern lights on this whole night and this yeah this is uh what i shot um behind the we literally just got out the van so the van the back of the van is in the is in this photo i had kind of looked over my pictures from the previous night quite a lot um, and i thought okay so everybody says and like all the things that you're supposed to do to shoot the northern lights is to do like super long exposures um so so much light can make it into the lens and the lights seem really really bright and i'd kind of made a deal with myself that on this night like i knew it was going to be super bright and i wouldn't need camera tricks to to do that so i had kind of planned that i would figure out ways to expose it for the right length of time that you could actually see what you could see with the naked eye with my like small camera so all of these are on um are on a g7x mark ii and this is basically what we could see as soon as we stepped out it was like literally with the naked eye this went from like one horizon over to the other and there were times um where it kind of yeah you can see this this is like me just directly pointing the camera up and yeah, there were times where it made me think of he uh, the Halo from the Halo video games. And what that says about me, you can uh, you can make your mind up. But yeah, it was literally from one horizon to the other. And that is just something that you can't get in a photo. Uh, maybe if you have like a massive fisheye lens. Um, but yeah, I have the point where it started on that side. I have the point where it ended on that side. And I have the middle bit. So yeah, as soon as we got there, there was like, okay, I've seen hugely bright northern lights with with the naked eye now everybody was really happy and then it kind of died down so the guys were like okay that obviously wasn't it that was just like a, a kind of that was like the support act <laughs> kind of and uh, there was no lights for a while so that's when they started a fire and that was really really nice um because it was cold like it was cold i kept looking at my phone um to check the weather and Apparently it was like zero or minus one um, and it can get that cold in England in the winter um, and yeah in Tromsø in October it was like that and I just thought this is colder than that it felt so much colder it wasn't even that windy I don't know maybe it was psychological because you're like oh I'm, I'm in the Arctic or whatever or maybe it's just because you're standing around most of the time or you're just out late at night when like you really shouldn't be um, these tours kind of start I think at like seven or eight and then you drive for a few hours and so the main part that you're watching the lights is between like 11 and 2 a.m 3 a.m something like that yeah so they started a fire and that was really nice i was like this is gold for the vlog like i don't even have to do anything especially at this point my um my wrist was really hurting um and like setting up the camera and the tripod and all of that all the time and i sometimes had to like take my gloves off to do it and that would let the cold in to my hand and to my wrist and it was <laughs> it was hurting quite a lot and then when we had the fire out i was like this is this is brilliant i just have to point it forwards and i get shots that actually like look good and they kind of tell they tell a story and they paint a picture of what it's like being out on this tour kind of cozy like campfire stuff i should oh, i should have made more effort to talk to all these people but oh, i was so cold I was so cold, my wrist hurt, I just wanted to see the lights. Uh, there was one, uh, yeah, the people sat across from me at the campfire here were English and we did have some like group conversations and I kept hearing their accent and I was like, I should go and talk to them. Uh, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't in the mood. I couldn't really be bothered. I actually spoke more with, um, there was some people sat on one side of me who were German 
and we had like a really small amount of small talk in German, which was quite nice. You could have reindeer or uh, pork or vegan sausages, and yeah, there was a big like furore about oh the vegan stuff. But yeah, it was really really cute. You could um, they gave you this like extendable fork so you could uh, cook your sausage on the fire, which was nice. And they gave you like this wrap thing to put it in, and you could have ketchup and mustard and. <laughs> Okay, I'm, it's a Northern Lights video on them, just talking about sausage. <laughs> uh, but basically they fed us and uh, you could keep warm around the fire. But when the first signs of the lights are back, um, obviously they have to put the fire out because it creates light pollution for the cameras. And I was really sad because I was cold even sat by the fire. And then when they turned it out and we were like waiting for the lights to come back, I was so, so cold just at there. It was not nice. They, they provide like, um, they will give you like warm clothes to put on, like a big kind of Arctic suit. And they kept offering that to me. And I was like, oh, I honestly can't be bothered putting on more clothes. They, they do help people who are really cold, but just too much of a strong man to, to be helped, obviously too much for an alpha male. And then this is when they came back. They're moving. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe soon we will see you dancing. In videos, they don't look quite so good and I couldn't see them at all on my camera screen, which is why I don't really have that many videos of it. Um, it's not till I brought it back and I turned the exposure up um, in, in, uh, in Final Cut that you can actually see the lights. Okay, so this is a good example of what I was trying to say. This, it looks incredible, but I had the exposure on for too long. This is brighter than it was. This, I actually fixed it. This is what you could see with the naked eye. And I don't think See, in my opinion, there's just no need to blow it out with the camera and make it look like super green everywhere. Because you imagine going outside and you look up and you have these like moving around above you in the sky. That is incredible. What you can actually see is incredible and there's no need to mess with it, in my opinion. You know, I think especially nowadays with like the competition of, of landscape photographers on Instagram, there's just more and more fakery all the time. And if one person does this to their pictures, then the next person needs to, otherwise they won't get any attention. As it was just moving across the whole sky, like redrawing its shape all the time. Oh, it was incredible. Everybody was so excited when we were watching this and um, the guys, uh, the, the tour guides were really, really happy. Whoa, now he's dancing, look above. As it kept getting stronger and stronger, you could just tell that they were getting excited. And like, even when we were around the campfire and they were waiting for it, because obviously they knew about the, uh, the situation with the solar flare. Um, they were reading all these tweets and they were like, oh, people are, um, people are saying that some GPS satellites aren't working. And that's obviously because, yeah, the, the solar flare was coming in and it was messing with like magnets and satellites and I don't know, science stuff. But like they were so, so excited. And that takes us to my one clip that I got that I literally just happened to be filming. So I decided I would just take my phone and I would film uh, my camera screen because for some reason the preview could show it. Um, but when I started to film on the camera, it wouldn't show it. So I just filmed um, my camera screen preview with my phone. And at that moment, when I started to do that, is when we got this incredible, incredible display. Oh, look at it now. There is the thing. There is the thing. Wow. That, is, that is the line that you just have to look at because there's honestly nothing like it. And then, and then I did ruin that clip because I started trying to take pictures and that's why it goes black here and then comes up with the picture that I took um, because it was moving so quickly during even a second exposure, it just comes up fuzzy. And then, yeah, you could see it here. That was literally what this whole thing is, is yeah, incredibly true to what was actually going on in the sky above us. And I know I keep making a fuss about that, but that is like, I don't think, I don't think the photos are what you pay to go and get. I think what you see is what you pay to go and get. So what you actually see to me is, is quite important. And then it did kind of go quiet. Um, the skies went kind of clear again and the guides were like umming and ahhing about setting the fire up and waiting again. And by this point it was so late. I think it might have been half three, maybe at this point. Um, and they were like, well, some nights we go till six. I was just thinking, no, I've got a plane. <laughs> like I actually have to go and fly. And I was hoping to get at least a few hours of sleep. Um, but in the end they were like, no, I think that was probably like the headline act for tonight. And when you see something like that, everybody's kind of enthusiasm is, it does kind of drop because everyone's like, well, 
we've seen the best possible thing. And I, eventually the guides came around to that. They were like, yeah, that's as good as it's going to get. We don't, we don't need to wait and then maybe see nothing. So yeah, having seen that, we, uh, we drove back to town. So there's, and there's one more part of the tour that I wanted to talk about. So the guides are also uh, professional photographers and they like will take pictures of the lights and also take pictures um, of you in front of the lights for you. So um, people who aren't like me, like normal people who don't own a camera and a tripod can just go and like just look and then take, uh, the guides will take care of pictures for you. So whenever there's kind of a good section of, of lights, you can, he'll be like, oh, everybody like, you know, stand here and I'll, I'll get pictures of you. Or, or you can ask him like, oh, can you get one of me like in front of that bit? And so he took a few of me and again this like this should have been what i led with this should have been like all over my instagram this should have been the thumbnail of the video something about it doesn't really work for me because every time i look at it i think well i don't even remember that happening because that never did happen this, this just it just annoys me because that's not what i actually saw and what i actually saw was incredible but that's not what people get like that's kind of what i was saying like everything around northern lights tourism is I'll crank it all up as much as possible and like make the night that we took people out look like the brightest night ever so that people will go on our tour or you know it's photographers doing it themselves and they're like I'll make the time that I went there seem the best so I look like the best photographer and I look like the landscape photographer who has the most luck but even with that even if you saw this and you did think that the sky looked like that it still doesn't actually do justice to actually being there and and being there on that night and seeing what it was actually like in the sky. Um, so you end up with this weird situation where I went once and it was really faint um, and the pictures blow it out and make it look way better than the experience of actually being there was. And then I went a second time and it was really strong and the photos do not do it justice and do not accurately describe how amazing it was to actually be there in person whether they're my like attempts to be realistic with the photos or whether they're the attempts to kind of blow it out. In neither case, they do justice to actually being there and seeing it like all the way across the sky, like moving, moving above you. Yeah, I do. The main thing I would recommend is just going to see them. Um, and yeah, in terms of any other tips that I have, I would say Tromsø is definitely it's the only place that I've seen them, but I would definitely recommend going there to see them. It's quite accessible. It's a really, really small city, um, but it is like completely, you know, it's not like, you know, you'd think of a town in the Arctic Circle as being like really kind of um, not that developed, but Tromsø is literally like completely a developed, like westernized city, but you're really, really far north. And yeah, it's really uh, easy to get to from the airport. Yeah, it's a modern city where you can like stay in a nice place but you're not far from like true kind of wilderness where the lights are and all the other stuff that people want to do in the north, like dog sledding and stuff like that. One of the guides uh, was telling me at one point that um, like the, the, there's a kind of a band around the earth, uh, around the North Pole, like where the northern lights can only show like in that band. Um, and Tromsø is supposedly like directly under the middle of it. So you can see the Northern Lights to the north and you can see Northern Lights to the south. Whereas if you're in Iceland, you're obviously further south. Um, so you have to hope that there's a patch of clear sky in, in the north. Um, and the same with Svalbard, because you're so far north, you have to hope that there's clear sky somewhere that you can look south. Whereas when you're in Tromsø, the whole thing is like, is kind of above you. So it's supposedly like a bit easier to see it there. Or, you know, that's what the people there said. They're obviously like <laughs> kind of biased. And about time of year, um, so I, yeah, like I said, I decided to go there in September and I actually went in October. Um, and as soon as I decided to go there, I followed all these Tromsø accounts on Instagram and all through September, they were posting the most incredible Northern Lights stuff. Um, and it made me kind of regret going there so late um, because going there in October, I was like, oh, obviously in January, you have the most chance of seeing the lights, um, but it's freezing cold and there's no daylight at all. And I was like, October is kind of a good compromise. Northern Lights season starts supposedly in September. So I was like, oh, that means it's probably like, you're, you're not really gonna see it in September. So I'll go in October. So it's like a bit colder um, and a bit shorter days, but still a decent chance of seeing them. And I should have just gone in September, honestly. The pictures I've seen from people who were there in September uh, were, were so amazing. Clothing, um, I don't need to tell you, obviously dress warm. Um, I had, yeah, like 
thermal clothes on under my clothes. I had like three t-shirts um, and a jumper and my hoodie and my coat and yeah, trying to take off three t-shirts to go to sleep when um, when you've got a potentially broken wrist was like, was not fun. But um, yeah, I was on, I was honestly on such a high from seeing such a good Northern Lights display that I didn't mind. Uh, anything else I would recommend? Uh, I don't know. Um, the main thing I would say is to give yourself time. Like one of the reasons I said I wanted to go to Tromsø for so long was that like people sometimes like fly in and out of Iceland for a weekend and they don't see the lights that whole weekend and they get disappointed. Um, but then in the end, uh, I went two nights in a row and I saw the lights twice. So I've made everything look really easy. I don't know how common that is. I would try to go wherever you're going to go for at least maybe a week. And then you can kind of pick like the best nights to go out on tours. And yeah, in terms of photography, um, in my opinion, don't blow your photos out and don't try and make it look way better than it actually was because I've been there now and I'll know, I'll see through your Instagrams and I'll know that it wasn't as good as that. <laughs> that was the whole point of me making this video. <laughs> no, obviously do whatever you want. Um, I just think it is kind of part of this culture of like where we try and one up each other and we use whatever tricks we can to make it look like we had the best experience and like had a better experience than everybody else. Um, but that's just my take on it that I've spent this whole video explaining. Um, <laughs> Now I think that's uh, that's all the tips that I had. Um, yeah, I was really lucky to get to see what I got to see. I hope that um, the same happens for you one day. Um, and yeah, let me know for one, uh, some Northern Lights stories that you have, and also whether or not you agree um, with my take on Northern Lights photography and so on that I spent so long in this video explaining. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If, yeah, by the time you're watching this, I, I'm probably not in Leipzig right now. I'm probably uh, traveling. I have a couple of weeks traveling in Europe with uh, some friends from the UK, which I'm really excited about. Um, let me throw in some things here, actually. Yeah, when uh, when we went to this place, I really loved it. And um, especially this, this was good. Um, and this is a really good memory that, that I really like. <laughs> just, <laughs> just making lots of work for myself in the future. Um, yeah, I'm be in Europe for a couple of weeks and then I'm actually going to, to the UK for a week, um, which will be really nice. My sister's getting married. So uh, that's that's what it's taken to get me back to the UK this time. Um, and yeah, I'll be posting a video from the Europe trip at some point this summer. So look forward to that. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. This will actually maybe be the last thing before I get my hair cut. Probably won't keep that in. <laughs>